holds barred network i'm here i've made it i'm on this kyle knows i'm doing this it's not like i'm hacking his youtube channel or anything and i'm here i've made it and for the first time in a really long time the no holds barred network presents to you wwe content welcome to a brand new episode of can we talk dressing and we are talking all about last night's monday night raw which includes shocking endings a good number one contender for a tag team Apparently, swords cut tables, and Randy and Riddle are meshing. I don't know if you would like to say the word very well, but they're meshing. Welcome to a brand new episode of Kimmy Talk Wrestling for the first time on the No Holds Barred Network. And we're starting... In case you haven't seen me on the AEP, my name's Kimmy, I'm from Staten Island, I'm 19, and the goal is to hopefully get to some wrestling promotion and work there. Um, I'm currently, or now, I'm a rising junior in college, so that's fun too, and yeah. Welcome! <laughs> I hope you have fun, but I'm really excited to talk to everybody with you all, and I want to thank Kyle and Tiff for giving me this opportunity to join the network and give you all WWE content. So here we go. Raw started with a battle royal to determine the number one contenders for a tag team championship opportunity in the near future. So now, I don't know if this means next week on Raw. I don't know if this means a hell in a cell. Money in the Bank, SummerSlam. See, I hate when they do this. And this is not even the first time they did it, like, on Raw yesterday. I was going to say it's nice that I'm filming it now. Because they did it with the U.S. Championship match. So, basically, you had the New Day. Mason T Bar, Lucha House Party with just Lindsay Dorado because Grand Matalik was hurt. And then you had the Viking Raiders, RK Bro, and then entering themselves into the match because they fell left out was Sean Morrison, even though the Miz is injured. But Miz has such courage to come out that John Morrison wanted to fight for the Miz and Morrison. Doesn't make sense, but okay. This battle royal was indeed a little interesting. It was very slow, I just felt, so I don't really like tag team battle royals no matter what promotion it's in, just because I feel like it's very chaotic, and the way WWE does it is just as soon as one member of the tag team is eliminated, the other one gets eliminated immediately after. And we saw that with every single tag team. So the final three were Kofi Kingston and both members of the Viking Raiders, well I guess final four, and then Randy Orton. And Riddle tried to make the save, and Kofi was going for the SOS on Orton. Riddle moved Orton out of the way and took it, and then that distracted Kofi. So then, so then Orton eliminated Kofi, and then the Viking Raiders eliminated Orton for the Viking Raiders one. And that was a really exciting thing, you know. The Viking Raiders just came back. Of course, Ivar had surgery, and then the other one um, had a baby with Sarah Logan. So. I'm excited for this. Oh, the Viking Raiders are a really good tag team, especially if you've seen their work on the Indies and Ring of Honor in Japan. So I'm excited for this. Like I said, I don't know when this is. Next week, Hell in a Cell. I'm assuming it's going to be a Hell in a Cell, but I just get a little confused that they say future chance. And they also kind of had interactions with AJ and Omos because they were like hyping themselves up and they were really excited. And then Omos went to go be like, look, I have a turkey leg. and. Then they were all like, oh my god, like, how could you do this? Whatever. But yeah, this is a good way to start. Like I said, taking Battle Royale wasn't really my thing, but start. And then, RK Bro. So this whole thing with the key, we need to talk about the key. Randy Orton, I feel like it's just his protective dad, right? Taking care of his childlike son. So Riddle was upset that he lost... And then Orton, like, there was a match announced, Riddle and Kingston, and or Orton gave Riddle the key, and Riddle was like, oh my god, Randy, I've been trying to tell you, like, so many things, I was like, so excited to go back on the road, and I'm so excited to be traveling, and we could be travel buddies, and Burger King, and Orton's like, bro, really? But Orton, Orton was wearing an RK Bro sweatshirt, so, progress here. 
and then this leads to the match and the match was really good i will say riddle shockingly because i'm not the biggest riddle fan has been probably one of the best things on raw because his matches have been really really good and this match is going back and forth and orton came out halfway through and basically riddle was trying to copy orton so he went for the vintage ddt and now he's like slamming like he's hitting the mat and Orin's like, yes, you have to finish him, finish him, finish him. And of course, you know, that just doesn't work. Because when other people do other people's finishers, they never win. And Kofi won and Orin was just so sad. And disappointed in his little son. So I believe that RK Bro is going to win the tag titles from AJ and Omos at SummerSlam. I think they want to do it in front of a live crowd. Just because of how over it's going to be in front of a live crowad so I definitely see that being the match of SummerSlam, but you know, they have to hype the tension and everything. Because technically, Riddle didn't turn heel. Riddle's still technically a face, but Randy Orton is a heel, so that's kind of confusing. <laughs> but I'm excited to see where this goes, because RK-Bro is technically one of the, as weird as this match is, RK-Bro is like the best thing on Raw, which is weird. And now speaking of that, we go to a hellacious ultimatum which is what I call this episode because we go to the contract signing and Drew McIntyre sitting out there and he tells the story of how you know as many times you can get knocked down you could always persevere and you could always win and then Lashley comes out and MVP goes you know we paid you guys respect last week because we didn't come out and interfere in the match and we didn't get to spend our 90 days without pay we want something in return so then the stipulation is going to be if Bobby wins Drew cannot challenge for the title anymore thank god and then this match is going to be inside of Hell in a Cell and then they had this stare off and Drew just decided to be hella freaking extra take his $70,000 sword and slice the table in half so I, I love this stipulation just because I'm so tired of seeing Drew and Bobby. I'm so tired of seeing Drew in the title picture. I'm so excited for the draft because I really want Drew to move over to SmackDown Do so many fresh new feuds. Drew needs to be out of the title picture. Very much so. I would not mind him maybe going with Sheamus once Sheamus heals from injury. And I'm battling for the US title because there's a story there. Because, you know, Sheamus can technically be like, oh... I've been saying this on my show a lot, like, oh, I have your number, like, I beat you all the time, you know, we've gone back and forth, so that's totally a story that you could use, WWE, if you want to take notes, because I know AEW watches the only pod on this network, so, WWE. <laughs> so, I'm just scared that because this is the stipulation, Drew's gonna win, and Drew doesn't need to win, because I'm really hoping this is leading to Bobby versus Lesnar, which is the current rumor at SummerSlam. But I don't know. But th th this story is so extra. I was just like, really? Like, that nice table. <laughs> so I needed to fill it out of Pierce so like on the side looked really scared too. And I was Drew. And then from that, the ending of Monday Night Raw. So obviously, Alexa's playground, right? That's what we've been hyping up. Alexa and Shane, obviously, Alexa's been interfering in the tag title matches after the fire. Is. Shane has had enough of it. And basically, Alexa's sitting there and Shayna just calls Lily a stupid doll. Alexa goes to beat her up. Alexa goes on the outside of the ring. Shayna steps on Lily and now the lights are flickering. Shayna's trying to escape. She goes in this room and the lights are still flickering backstage and stuff. And Lily appears, but Lily's not there, but the mirror reflection's making it look like Lily's there. And then Shayna just screams and breaks a mirror. And then that's how we end Raw. Why are we doing this? <laughs> like, if you just look at Shayna in NXT as probably the most dominant NXT Women's Champion ever, and now this is what you're putting her on. I really like the Alexa stuff in the beginning, but I feel like every sort of version of a character has played its course, and I feel like there's nothing more you could do with this, because my biggest fear is now Alexa's gonna be a 2.0 of The Fiend, meaning she's gonna lose every single match. And that's not what we want. I'm a huge fan of Alexa, mostly because me and her are the same exact freaking height, and short people make lives better. So I, I don't know. Like, this, like, as soon as this went down, I would have brought up a contract signing and we're off just because of the sword. I, I, I just don't know where it goes from here. Obviously, this is going to lead to Shane and Alexa, 
but I don't know where Lily plays a part of this. I don't know if this is going to be cinematic. And like with them going back on the road, how much of the theme stuff can you do in front of a live crowd? You can't do a lot of it anymore because the perks of being in the Thunderdome is that you can pre-tape a lot of stuff. You cannot do that. Well, you can do that in a live crowd, but it would just be really weird. And then everyone wanted to wear, oh my god, they taped it. So there's a lot of pros and cons to this, so I don't know, I'm hoping maybe we could get a, a, an older version of Alexa, but do not end raw with this. <laughs> like, the, like I feel like WWE looks at their viewership and is like, oh, not that bad, let's end with Alexa. I mean, raw was, see, raw wasn't bad, it wasn't good, but it wasn't bad. You know, I like the Mantor Mustafa Ali stuff. I think that's really cool. And I hope, like, Ali is kind of like a manager to Mansoor. I think that would be kind of cool. And I would love, to, again, tag teams. We need tag teams. So but we just love breaking them up. That would be something really cool. Um, I love that they're using Ricochet and Alberto Carrillo in the U.S. title picture. I think that's really cool. I hated the double count out. That was stupid. Don't do that. Especially because, um, obviously I believe Sheamus is going to wrestle with the mask on. Because he broke his nose last week. But if you're not going to have him wrestle with the nose on, wh like, why? And again, a future opportunity. When is that? Next week? Hell on that stuff? Money in the bank? Summer stuff? When? <laughs> just give me a date. I just want to know when. And obviously the other big thing for me was Eva Marie's debuting next week. There's been rumors all day that she's going to have someone else with her, whether it be Piper Niven or Mercedes Martinez. So that should be really interesting. Hopefully I don't turn my TV out the window. But that's pretty much all the big things that happened on Raw. But like I said, it wasn't good. It wasn't bad. It was okay. And hopefully this this draft, I'm telling you, is going to turn everything around. This draft is going to do something big. I hope. If it doesn't, I'm going to cry, cry in the corner. So yeah. So basically, if you don't know the format of my videos, I don't do every segment of Raw. I just try to take the big things and dissect it, review it, and just say what I like and don't like about it. I feel like you all watch Raw, most of you. I don't need to sit here and for 30 minutes and review every single segment. So yeah, so make sure to like this video, comment what you all thought, make sure to click that bell for notifications and subscribe, go over to my cool YouTube channel to see some stuff I'm doing with Ring of Honor, Kimmy Talk Wrestling, follow me, all my stuff's going to be in the description below, and I'll see you all tomorrow for our NXT review. This Fatal 5 is looking quite interesting, and we're on the road in your house, which is this weekend, and that's it for me.